National Caucus deliberated on critical issues relating to the party and resolved as follows. One, that all organs of the party should continue to work in the interest of the unity, stability, and growth of the party. Two, the caucus received and approved the timetable for the party congresses. The local government, the world, and the state congresses as they become ready for. And it is going to be between June and August 2024. The caucus approved that the NWC should reconstitute the disciplinary and reconciliation committees of the party. These are standing committees of the party that we need to rejig in proceeding with all our issues in the party. Umar Damagu continues to be the acting national chairman of the party until the next meeting of NEC after tomorrow's NEC meeting. And the, and, the, and the advice on that is this. The party considered that it is important to have more consultation on that issue. And that what we are going to live with is that we as a party must be united. And those issues are not such as to divide us. No influence that we are going to follow our constitution in line with any succession plan, having regards to the circumstances we find ourselves. All right, so that and more are what we'll be talking about this morning. And we've got uh, Mr. Humphrey Abba here with us in the studios. He is a former Minister of Interior, former Minister of Police Affairs, former Minister of Trade and Investments, a legal practitioner, and now a chairmanship aspirant for the People's Democratic Party. Good morning and thank you for joining us today on the program. Good morning, Chamberlain. Good Quite morning. a lot. Quite a lot unfolded in the party. Yeah. Uh, some thorny issues, uh, one of which is the chairmanship position. Yeah. So um, you heard Mr. Debo Lugmagba there, the spokesperson of the party, reading out some of the decisions that have been taken ahead of your next meeting. So this challenge that your party faces, I know that at the end of the day, parties have a way of working it out, but the build up, it does raise a lot of concern. How concerned are you? You think this is just like, you can sort this out yourselves easily. Um, thank you. Um, every party member should be concerned about the crisis that is building up. Um, like you said, it has come with a lot of tension uh, and it creates uh, room for uh, camps to be built and all of that, which, which is unhealthy. But again, in party politics, you expect that there are uh, different groups, different opinions, uh, but eventually it will crystallize where democracy takes its toll, where democracy is allowed to express itself. Uh, then it will crystallize in the final decision that might help to build a party and make it stronger. So what is your opinion about this rift within the party? Because we know it stems from the last elections when uh, the former VP got the ticket and the former uh, governor reversed it, lost out on the ticket. My opinion is that it is important to address that rift frontally. And the way to address that rift is to um, have a genuine reconciliation. Genuine reconciliation. And in party politics, you are bound to have uh, people with differentials in opinion. But at the end of the contest, we must have the ability to genuinely reconcile party members okay. and get them to work together. You said genuine a number of times. It suggests that whatever else has happened was not genuine. I, I don't think there has been reconciliation um, uh, that have been accepted, acceptable to both sides. What would the difference be in this one? Um, maybe in the people that will bring them together to settle them, to be able to tell them the truth and say, okay, you, this is it, this is the part to two, this is the constitutional uh, uh, provisions of the party, follow it and do what the party wants you to do. So there must be, um, like we have the Board of Trustee, which is made up of our uh, eminent, elders. eminent yeah. elders and leaders. Mm -hmm. I am of the view that the Board of Trustees should be able to call the parties involved and uh, settle this issue in finality, 
I'm very happy that you immediately, because my next question to you was going to be who, who has the power to, you know, call the parties together and, and say, you know, this is, this is for them to reconcile. But I, I, I'm just a little curious um, as to whether they've not gone beyond reconciliation. When you look at all that has transpired so far and the fact that right now one of the major contenders is a minister just a minister of anywhere, minister of the federal capital territory, serving in the government of the All Progressives Congress. Um, don't you think that too much has happened for any meaningful reconciliation to take place? No. I, as long as we are all still members of the People's Democratic Party. You accept his membership of the PDP? Yes, why not? He's still a member of the PDP. He has not renounced his membership. Mm. He has not renounced his membership. And um, if I may say, yeah, with benefit of hindsight, it's not the first time that um, governments have formed cabinet across boards. Uh, President Obasanjo did it in 1999, where he brought members of um, ACN and APP into his government. But he did that with the knowledge of their parties. Yes, and I and the I permission of their parties. Yes, I understand that the National Working Committee of uh, PDP gave approval for this to happen. Uh, that they, was done. They did. Yes, they did that early in the in, in the days of. So the why are some government. people then saying it's anti-party activity? It, I think it is um, uh, running from what happened after the uh, presidential congress uh, of the party last year. Uh, I think that bad blood is still uh, building. Is still is still uh, running in both camps. So uh, the divide has not closed. The divide has not closed. Otherwise, it is not um, a new thing that cabinets are formed uh, across party lines in this country. Mm. Uh, it is supposed to promote unity. It is supposed to uh, drive inclusiveness and all of that. But here, uh, I think it is uh, tearing us apart. Mm. Because some people have also, you know, said that this is an act of indiscipline. Yes. And they think that, you know, the minister should be disciplined yeah, by I the think party. Yeah, I think it is, uh, it is uh, a fallout from the presidential elections. It is a fallout from the positions that parties took before and during the presidential elections. That is why I said earlier that we have not been able to have a genuine reconciliation of the uh, two parties. Uh, post uh, presidential primaries. Once we, you are able to achieve that, all this will die out. How is that going to be achievable given that trust has been so irretrievably broken? Yes, uh, it is, it is uh, damaging to break trust. I agree that it's damaging to break trust. But in a political dispensation where the interests of the party and the people you represent ought to be paramount, then uh, parties should be should be aware that the people are more uh, are, are the central focus, not their individual interests. So uh, that's why I said earlier that the members of the board of trustees have a Herculean task in bringing these two people together and settling them so that there can be peace in the party. One of the key point bone of contention is the chairmanship seats. Yes. For so which you are vying for. Yes. Now, you heard the, uh, the spokesperson also say, Mr. Namago will continue till probably the neck uh, because they want wider consultation as a result of, you know, the former chairman, Yechari, has said, okay, he's putting out his case in court. And so some people still think, no, Mr. Namago should not be. It should be gone since yesterday. And then that's on the one hand. Then in addition to that, you also have different people who are saying that position should be maintained from where it came from, which is not Kogi State. No, it's not about states. It's about the zones. The position of the national chairman mm -hmm. was zoned to North Central. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Yachai is from North Central. Mm -hmm. What the North Central team is saying is that that position uh, his tenor, the tenor remains to be served out, as it has happened in time past. That replacement should be done from North Central. Now, what the PDP governors have said, uh, 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 consequent to their meeting last night, was that because of the tension, 
the palpable tension that everybody can feel uh, in order to try to maintain unity in the party. Uh, there should be a little time given for wider consultation for a replacement to be made of Damago. They are not saying that Damago should not be uh, replaced. I do not think that is what they are saying. If you listen, no, he remains until until August. Yes. Said. Now, so there is a time frame for consultation and to calm down now, in order to for allow the North Central uh, Zone to produce a replacement for Dr. Yechai. We had a meeting yesterday, the Carcass of North Central, okay, and we reached a resolution that the North Central will ask will ask at today's night for the enforcement of the constitution. That's it. Because this is a constitutional thing. What part? Um, I think section 46 or so. Regarding the constitution uh, of the chairmanship? Uh, it says that where the chairman is uh, 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 resigns or uh, is taken out of office, it should be replaced from the same zone to serve out that term. So all we are asking for is that allow us to serve out the term in North Central, because that has been zoned to us. So what will serving out the term mean in, in this case? Does it mean... To the end of his tenure in 2005, uh, uh, 2025. Yeah. And we have precedence. It has happened in time past. It's not happening for the first time. When uh, Bamanga Tukuru resigned as the national chairman of uh, PDP, he was replaced by somebody from the zone. When uh, um, uh, um, the former governor of Bauchi State also resigned, was replaced by somebody from the zone. As a matter of fact, the matter has been contested in the courts. And the Supreme Court had given a decision that that was the proper thing to do. Where a man resigned from office based on our constitution, you should replace that officer from the zone where the uh, office was zoned to. Mm. It's, if you look at, uh, we lost the national woman leader of PDP recently, and the South South Zone met and replaced her with somebody from the South South. It didn't cause any rancor. When the Zonal Chairman of uh, Southwest, who is a member of the NWC, died, he was replaced by somebody from the Southwest. Mm. This does not call for argument. It's not something happening for the first time. There, there are a number of issues. I mean, first, I'd like to take you up on, I mean, I'm going to be asking a a triple barrels question right now, oh, but oh, you yeah. can you can take them in what are they? One, I want to know what it is that you expect to see today, um, as the meeting takes place. Uh, there are those who have written. I'm seeing this message here from uh, Osita Chidoka, who is also a member of your party, who has said uh, that there is a sense of urgency to deal with matters within the PDP. Um, he's not saying very clearly what exactly must happen, but he says the party must put an end to its submission to filthy lucre and macabre dancing to the music of unprincipled pipers. It must return to the role of providing good governance to the states and principled opposition that Nigerians can trust. Um, he says if this doesn't happen, the consequences will be dire. It's a matter of grave urgency to save the soul of the party that ushered and stabilized democracy in Nigeria. Um, it comes actually with a subtle threat that if this doesn't happen today, he'll be one of those who, he'll be one of the pallbearers, so to speak. Yeah. So, so I'm just wondering, what do you expect to happen today? Well, I expect that <clears throat> our party should firmly, firmly restate the position of our constitution and the readiness of the party to comply with it. The time frame becomes a different ball game, right? Because you, you cannot conduct an election today to replace, or a replacement, you cannot produce a replacement for Dr. Ayu today. So you have to set a time frame for it. But let the party come out clearly to um, tell us members that they are ready to obey the party constitution. From what you read out mm -hmm. uh, of Osita's uh, 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 right, right up and message. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with you that look, we need to begin to show that we are ready to obey our own rules. The, the, the major problem PDP has is the disobedience to our own rules. Disobedience to our own rules. That is what is causing all this crisis. If, if you and I are going into contest and the party that is an umpire provides 
um, ground rules for the contest. And we now get on into the field, and I find out that no, the party is not following even the rule they have set, and they are now leaning towards one of us. It's going to cause bad blood. It's going to create uh, uh, enmity. It's going to become difficult to settle us after the contest. Mm. And that is what is destroying the party on a daily basis. I think that is what Osita is alluding to. And I agree with him to a, a, a great extent that we need to reaffirm to members, uh, NEC needs to reaffirm to members that they are prepared to go by the rules of the party and ask North Central to replace Dr. Yachai. What's the significance of the court case which he withdrew, the appeal which he withdrew, that's the Senator Yacha Ayu, from the courts? The, the significance is that he had accepted the decision of the High Court of Macaulay that removed him from office. No, so or that uh, affirmed his removal from office. Yeah, so he's accepted it, but some people will say it's his right to appeal. He's withdrawn that appeal. Do you, do you think it's to soften the ground for anything? Is it to make room for reconciliation? What precisely... What bearing does it have with the meeting today? My reading of it is that he's just being a peaceful party man who, who wishes the party well. He desires that the party will grow along constitutional order. He does not want to become the stumbling block because some people were flagging his issue up as, oh, Dr. Ayu still has a case in court, so there is no vacancy and all of that. So now he has been out of office for over a year. Uh, what is the point pursuing an appeal and appeal all that time? Uh, probably that you know uh, the end result. So, so he, yeah. he had taken a gentleman's uh, position by saying, look, I'm out of this. Let there be peace in the party. Why do you think you should be the PDP chairman and not any other person, maybe former governor of Benue or anybody else? Well, a lot of us are qualified to be PDP chairman. Well, I think I have uh, specific issues that if given the opportunity, I would like to address. Uh, and you know that the vision belongs to the visioner. Uh, so I have specific issues within the framework of our constitution that if given the opportunity, I can, I can, I can put in place to remove this kind of uh, uh, difficulties, challenges we have in, during each cycle of election. Big time we have election is that you have these challenges of imposition of uh, people have been uh, shortchanged, the rules have not been followed. You want to stop imposition of candidates? I, I will be able to put in, in place, uh, I will be able to put in place uh, a system that will enable the party to run without that happening. Can you stop delegates from being influenced financially? And it is possible if you set up the proper framework. Because um, um, this happens when you begin to gather delegates. You say, oh, bring all the delegates to this uh, room where Chamberlain is and get them to decide who should go to represent. But if I disperse them, they can, can transfer things to no, the delegates. No, no. It's they, only they by are, gathering they are, delegates they are, that, they are, that, that they happens. Look, they are you know, you, you, we, the party has been run on, a, on an analog basis since. Mm. You want to digitize it? We want to digitize the oh, party. We want to take the party back to the people. And once you introduce some of those uh, new technologies into running the party, these issues will fizzle out. I it think might I not, know somebody it tried might not it. be perfect, but the party it didn't work. You, pardon me? I thought somebody, one former chairman, tried that process. No, they didn't. The registration, digitizing it, the party. They didn't. It didn't even take off. They didn't even take off. It didn't take off. No, it didn't uh, take off. The idea was there, but I didn't take off. Oh, yeah. You know? Thank you, Chamberlain. Well, Mr. Abad, there is an elephant in the room, so to speak. Um, looking at the pictures of the meeting that took place yesterday, um, it would seem like there is an elephant in the room. You spitted it in your response to one of Malcolm's questions earlier. But the issues that informed the differences in the build up to the 2023 presidential election, they seem unresolved. Um, between the um, some elements in the party, the two camps, so to speak, some elements in the party in support of the former vice president's um, uh, intention or attempt to be president of Nigeria, and uh, former governor of River State, Yeson Wike, who is also minister of the FCT today. How 
should or how would you address that kind of issue given the opportunity? Because there are still free nerves. Uh, thank you. You know, um, I had said it earlier and I want to repeat um, that in all of human association, you are going to have, you are bound to have frictions. You are bound to have differences. And these differences will lead, might, might lead to frictions. But the ability for conflict resolution, proper conflict resolution, uh, will help to free this now, to, to, to free this now from uh, busting. So what needs to be done is to, we have leaders, we have elders in the board of trustees, we have respectable leaders. We need to constitute honest men and women and get them to bring these people together and resolve it. In every of human establishment, conflict resolution is integral. Well, because you expect that there will be conflict mm -hmm. along the line. Even well, in a family, in a, a nucleus family, in a nucleus family where you have 10, a man had given birth to 10 children. Mm -hmm. You do not expect that all of them will agree on all fours on everything. Well, Mr. Abba, but it's been a very, but very... But it is the role of the father to... Yes, to just, a, just a second. Huh? It's, a, it's been a very costly, very, very costly conflict unresolved for the uh, PDP, particularly in the last election, given all of the build-up that happened. And this particular conversation that you are having with us now, the issues that you are raising, that the elders will have, ought to have done something, we know, you know, everyone knows how it went or didn't go. So what is new that should be done that has not been done? Because we understand that there were attempts at the time to intervene what should be different now? They sat in the same room yesterday trying to hold a meeting. And of course, so how do we make progress with this kind of situation when PDP is supposed to be the leading opposition party in the country? What should be done differently is the people who were managing the party, uh, let me take you back, after the presidential primaries, the people who were managing the parties, who uh, noticeably became uh, part of the problem were also the people who tried to resolve the problem. And that could not have produced a positive re uh, uh, result. Because if I know that you worked against me in the primary, you worked, uh, you worked for one of the candidates in the primary, and you turn around to want to now settle us, how do you think uh, I will accept your intervention as being genuine? They should, we, we have people who are not on either side. And that's why I keep talking about elders in the board of trustees. We have people who are not on either side, who have not been involved in the settlement of this matter. And I think they have a large role to play and they have the capacity to call these two people to order and bring sanity back to the party so that this party can assume its legitimate role in its real role of being the largest party in this country. This what is also is the largest party in this country. Yeah, what, what was also interesting, Mr. Abba, is it's not only in this case that there were differences. In the build-up to the 2023 uh, general elections, there were all kinds of divisions, um, particularly in the People's Democratic Party, since that's what we are talking about right now. And there are those who say even the fallout of the 2023 elections in several other areas haven't really settled. So the, the lack of that uh, conflict resolution may also be seen being displayed right now in River State with the former governor and um, the incumbent governor. Should, is it time for the PDP at the national level to intervene? Because it will seem like there's been silence over time. There is, uh, yeah, you, are, you are correct, the fallout came out from the presidential primaries and it has been snowballing from one event to the other. Um, uh, giving you the current example you gave in Rivers, yes, our, our leaders at the top level, uh, our leaders who, who are not involved in any side of the, on, on, on either side of the dispute, ought to come in to resolve these issues. It is time for the people at uh, 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 national level 
to intervene in rivers and uh, bring sanity back uh, to the party in that state. Uh, the, the sad thing that is happening in PDP is that there's, um, uh, you are gradually having people building camps and holding on to them uh, fastidiously. They are building camps um, uh, and taking ownership of the party instead of allowing the people uh, who originally own the party to own the party. If, if we do not stop this, if we do not take the party back to the people, if we do not change the ways we are doing things, if we do not uh, reinvent PDP, the, the party will just uh, uh, collapse. I'm afraid to say it. If we continue the way we are going, the party will be in, in deep crisis more, and it will not help us. So I, I use this opportunity to, to ask the elders, especially those of them in the Board of Trustees who are not on either side of this conflict, to step in and call people to order, and call Just, a spade a spade. So what is a spade? What is a spade in this case? Discipline must be brought back into the party. That is, is a way of calling a spade a spade. Discipline must be brought back into the party. If you see that I have not obeyed the constitution of this party, if you see that what I'm doing is contra the, contra the rules and regulations of the party, there should be somebody who should be able to look at me and say, look, Humphrey, what you are doing is offending our party constitution. You should stop it or we'll discipline you. We All must right. have the capacity to do that. Uh, the party has since lost that ability, I must tell you. The party has since lost that ability to discipline its early members. And that is part of the challenge that PDP has. All right, Mr. Humphrey Abba is the chairmanship aspirant uh, for the People's Democratic Party. He's also a former minister of trade and investment, former minister of interior, former minister of police affairs, and a legal practitioner. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you, Chamberlain. Thank you, madam. Thank you so All right, much. So that answer. is the show today. We do thank you for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow. I'm Chamberlain Asaf. Goodbye. Thank you. I'm Malpe Ogun Yusuf. Have a great day. And have a wonderful day ahead for you. I'm Ayo Makinde.